In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get your skin tones dialed in quickly inside DaVinci Resolve. And if you're looking for a more in-depth way of like color grading, we also have a tutorial on the channel for that. If you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Let's jump in. Okay, with Resolve loaded up, I have a clip here in the timeline. This is just a clip of me on a white background for one of my uh, older videos. And I'm gonna show you a new way in DaVinci Resolve to color correct your skin tones very quickly. Even though the old way was somewhat fast of selecting your skin tones, isolating them, and then working with it this way, DaVinci Resolve 19 introduced a new tool called the Color Slice, which is right here that's in the color page beside the curves. And this gives you a whole bunch of new options to quickly change things in your footage, such as your red tones, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, as well as this skin tone area. And then there's a few settings at the top that apply to the full frame. The first thing I'll show you is how to isolate the skin tones by holding on the highlight button. And that will show you what Resolve thinks the skin tones are. And it's done a pretty good job. It's excluding the hat, the shirt, the lips, eyes, and the background. And if we move this all the way to the right, you can see that it does a worse job. And if we move it all the way to the left, then the edges of the selection becomes a little more blocky. I would avoid going all the way over, but minus 0.6 or seven, I think is a safe place. Depending on the footage you're working with, you're gonna to wanna to make different changes than what I will do for my clip. For this one, I shot it slightly overexposed and the room itself is just sort of a white living room. And because as I said, it's a little bit overexposed, I've lost a bit of detail in sort of my forehead, the cheeks, and the skin tones themselves are pretty light. So we'll keep that in mind when we're making some changes. You might be working with footage where it's exposed better or there's a wall reflecting a certain color onto the skin and you'll need to make changes accordingly based on your footage. The first thing I notice is we're lacking a bit of that natural reddish that comes in skin tones. So let's go to the hue and we'll increase it a bit. And it is subtle, but when we add some saturation, it will pop a little more. So we'll go up with this to about 110. And if we turn off the effect, you can already see what it's doing. And then next I'll show you my favorite tool in this new section, which is the density slider. And this can drastically change your footage. If you go up, it will make you older or it will make you look like you're sunburnt. Either way, obviously that is too much of the darkening and all the details. But if that's what you're going for, let's say you're creating a film and you want your character to look older, this can be a very quick and easy way to do that. But then if we go all the way to the bottom, this is actually what I'm excited about because this is a good way to soften the skin tones and hide some of the imperfections. Like maybe there's some blemishes or wrinkles or changes in color that you're not happy with. So let's go ahead and drop this to the bottom. You'll see that it blows out all the skin tones and blends in all the tones a little better. So I think that's probably a little too extreme. So somewhere around minus 0.4, I think looks good. And then on the overall frame under the red section, I think we will drop it again. And keep in mind, while the density slider is nice in hiding some of the detail and softening up the skin, it does remove some of the color tone. In this case, some of that red that we were trying to get at the beginning. So in the red section, let's increase this a bit, maybe 0.04. And also in the red channel, let's lower the density as well by just a bit. Okay, next at the top part here, we will change the entire frame's look in terms of the density. We'll bring that down to like minus 0.30. After that, we can compare the before and after. So that's before and then after. And you can see the orangey red skin tones popping back in, but everything else in the frame stays the same. So using the new color slice is an easy way to make quick adjustments to just your skin. And if you wanna go into fine detail and make sure you are hitting your skin tone marks, make sure that you are using some graphs. You can find the correct one by clicking on the scopes button, changing this to vector scope. And this is your skin tone line. If you want it to show up, you go into the settings and then you can click on a show skin tone indicator. That will give you this line. 
and then you can make it twice as big. And generally speaking, all of your skin tones in any clip should match up to this line. That's sort of your guide or reference. And as you can see, we're pretty much up there. Now, if we do wanna make some changes, I mean, we can pivot it a little bit, add a little bit more red, and that gets us to the center. We can check a before and after of that now. So yeah, the color slice is actually a really cool tool and it's awesome that they've included this because this actually replaces uh, third-party plugins that you may have been using in the past, such as like Cosmo. I know that was a popular a skin tone third-party plugin. And of course, this tutorial was just to cover and show you the color slice and the skin tone features. So I'd obviously recommend doing your color correction first, getting your whites to look white, making sure that your color balance is accurate, and that you're happy with the overall color correction that you do before you start to dial in your skin tones. Because again, the color slice skin tone feature is meant to be used like this, where it is isolating only the skin tones in a much more streamlined and automatic way than if you were to try to do it with the color picker and again, choose the hue, saturation, and luminance. Okay, that's how you can dial in your skin tones inside DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 200 videography related how to's and review videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.